Hello, thank you for clicking on today's video. Today we're going to continue our discussion on the analysis of two quantitative variables. Specifically, we're going to be talking about how to measure their strength and direction. And to do that, we're using this thing called linear correlation. Now, one thing I want to note before we continue this discussion is when you are going to measure the linear correlation, the first thing that you need to do, and this hopefully should make sense, you need to look at the scatter plot and make sure the pattern is, what do you think? Linear. So if you're going to use this, make sure you look at a scatter plot, make sure that the data that's being represented that you're about to analyze is linear, and then you can continue on with this linear correlation. Other thing to note is that linear correlation can go by other names. So there's the correlation, the notation for it is the lowercase r, so our correlation coefficient r, and then it can also be called the Pearson correlation. So here's the formula for this linear correlation. Now you can see what it's actually doing is it's going to take each observation, so that's the x sub i, and then it will subtract the mean for all of the x's. And then it's going to take all of the y observations and subtract the mean for all of the y observations. Now fortunately, you can see how much work this formula is. We have computing packages that will do that work for us. But one thing that I want you to know is that r is going to be the information on both the strength and direction of the relationship between these two quantitative variables. So one variable re being represented in the x's and then one variable being represented in the y's. That hopefully should make sense to you why we need it to be two quantitative variables because these are quantities. You can't have categorical variables in this spot. So when you talk about that correlation coefficient r, it's measuring strength and direction, but here are some of the rules connected to it. So the first thing is with the direction, it's going to be telling you if the scatter plot is going up as x increases, so as you increase on the x-axis, or it will tell you if as the x increases, if y is decreasing. So that's the direction component. So that will be connected to whether or not the uh, correlation coefficient comes out with a negative or a positive. So if it's negative, this is what the scatter plot would be looking like, and if it's positive, you're seeing this type of scatter plot. Now the next thing that we have is going to be the strength. So this is one thing that really can throw people because you see a negative number, you think smaller or weaker. That is not true here. A negative number only indicates the direction and the magnitude of it, so if you were to take the absolute value, will indicate strength. So that means a correlation coefficient of negative 0.8 is just as strong as a correlation coefficient of 0.8. Those are the same magnitude. The negative is just indicating the direction. So the next thing that we have is that the correlation coefficient does not have units. So it's just looking at the strength of the relationship and the direction. It will not have the units that are represented on the scatter plot like age and maybe distance to read a highway sign. That doesn't exist for these correlation coefficients. Another rule is that it has to be between negative 1 and positive 1. It will not go outside of that range. So the closer it is to either end of that spectrum, the stronger the relationship. Remember that that negative 1 is just as strong as that positive 1. The sign is indicating the direction. The next thing we have is that outliers significantly impact these correlation coefficients. So it could be that it makes it stronger if you've got a big outlier but it's in line with the overall pattern. But if it's straying from the overall pattern, it's going to significantly negatively impact that correlation coefficient. So this would be a time that you want to make sure when you see an outlier that it's a legitimate outlier and it's not maybe a typo or somebody who snuck into the sample that shouldn't have been included. The next thing to consider is that when you have an R that's close to zero, it does not mean that there's no relationship, it just means there's no linear relationship. So when you have a correlation coefficient and it looks like it's close to zero, you might have a situation like this. Or you could have a situation that has <clears throat> kind of a blob that's going like this. Now those things, this has a relationship, it's just not a linear relationship, and that might have an R that's closer to zero. 
So the next thing that I want to show you is when you're looking at a scatter plot, what does it look like when you have an R of negative one or you have an R of positive one? So here, this scatter plot, and here, this scatter plot, I would say that this is a perfect linear relationship which means there's no variation, and this is an R of one. Perfect on the line, and it's positive because as X increases, Y is increasing as well. Here, this would be a perfect linear relationship, but this R would be negative one because as X increases, Y is decreasing. So the negative is indicating the direction, and the one is indicating that it's a perfect linear relationship. So in future videos, I'll show you actual scatter plots, and we'll start talking about how you can kind of connect a correlation coefficient with different scatter plots so you can see what that looseness or tightness of those patterns would do in terms of R. See you there.